Welcome to Madison City Channel's Know Your Candidates interviews, co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Dane County. I'm your interviewer, Marilyn Townsend, and I would like to introduce J.L. Curry, running for Alder in District 16. Welcome. As we begin, I'd like you to give an opening statement about the educational, vocational, and civic experience you have, which qualifies you for this office and why you are running for Alder. Thank you, Marilyn, and good morning. Um, so I am J.L. Curry, as uh, stated. I am the incumbent for this seat. Um, I ran as a first-time candidate about two years ago now, and I'm seeking re-election to the seat to continue the work um, that we started. I'm a lifelong Madisonian, lifelong East Sider, um, and am a social service provider working in homeless services um, employed through YWCA Madison. So I initially ran because housing and homeless issues um, are very uh, key and dear to my heart, um, and I felt a almost ethical and moral responsibility to lend my voice to a higher level of leadership in regards to city policy. Um, my key areas of uh, policy passion are housing and affordability, um, public safety, but also uh, coming with a lens of equity in all that we do and in upholding the city's mission and values. What actions or programs would you support to enhance public safety in Madison? And in particular, what is your position on the use of body cameras by Madison police officers? Sure, thank you for the question. So public safety is extremely important. Um, I think what I have gathered within my uh, time being an elected official is that um, we tend to think about lo solely law enforcement um, when we talk about public safety, but it encompasses so much more. Um, it's emergency medical response um, by our Madison Fire Department and our paramedics. And so um, I would continue to support the CARES program, um, which is a community response through the Madison Fire Department um, to individuals who are having mental health crises. Um, in the work that I do daily, um, being a social service provider, I see the intersection of folks who are struggling to get their basic needs met um, and how that often unfortunately ends them up in a higher propensity or higher opportunity to have uh, an engagement or contact with law enforcement. Um, we do need to have a strong uh, police force, so I will continue um, working and collaborating with uh, Madison Police Department, specifically on the east side, working very closely with Neighborhood Resource Officer Alexa Graham and uh, East Police Station or District Captain Jamar Gary to stay um, up to date on what they're hearing and seeing in their experiences being out in the field and supporting other officers who are out in the field. Um, but I also think that we can curb a lot of um, issues that create crime by looking at providing um, and making sure all Madisonians have access, equitable access and opportunity to get their basic needs met, such as housing, employment, um, safe housing and uh, job opportunities. What do you see as the most important environmental issues the city needs to address? What will be your priorities for council action on these issues? Absolutely. So I, I hate to say it, but we're still in COVID. Um, two years ago, everything was solely virtual. And so I know now we're doing hybrid and having some in-person, but it continues to be a public health issue um, that the Public Health Department of Madison and Dane County has done excellent um, providing services, education and resources to our community to continue keeping us safe and hopefully um, move and transition into a post-pandemic um, society. I think also um, what is important about our environmental justice and environmental safety is making sure that we have safe, clean water. And so we know that um, we have issues uh, with PFAS and PFAS contamination. 
um, that isn't singular to any side or district of the city, but is a citywide issue. So continuing to support, again, efforts that are um, happening on a public health level by our public health uh, department, but also I would like to continue um, seeing collaborations between the city and the county, knowing that the county board and um, other departments are working towards remediation efforts, um, testing efforts to make sure that we can ensure our water stays safe and that we get rid of harmful contaminants. What is your position on increasing the pay for alders? Sure, thank, that's another important question. Um, so in the last budget cycle, when we were deliberating regarding 2023, um, I was a sponsor and supporter of increasing alder pay. Um, the measure did fail, but I thought it would, I appreciated that comprehensive conversations came out of it. Um, while alders and elected officials are public servants, the job is extremely hard. Um, if you were to ask me now questions that was asked two years ago as a newbie and not having sat in the seat, they would be drastically different. Um, I don't think that salary and pay, um, it should not be a sole incentive, but I think it also helps uh, create waves of um, capacity, building capacity. So for instance, a conversation we've been having lately is about um, being able to provide intern stipends for alders to be able to have some secondary um, assistance or assistance to deal with some of the day-to-day uh, -day issues that create um, capacity, lack of capacity to, to respond. So I am supportive, but I also um, would much rather see money if it's to continue providing the high quality services that we provide to our residents or increasing alder pay, I will always use my position to elevate um, things that will affect the whole city. What, if anything, do you think the city should be doing to support economic development? Well, the city is already um, doing a lot. I know there's always more that can be done. Um, so in District 16, for instance, uh, the growth that we've been seeing is more industrial. And so supporting local business, um, looking towards uh, some type of incentives to create more development. So using uh, available tax credits such as TIF, um, continuing to keep an eye on equity and thinking about um, diversity and who are uh, starting and um, maintaining successful local businesses. And so continuing to amplify and support uh, business owners of color, um, women business owners and providing uh, assistance, whether that is um, loan forgiveness, um, programs that are targeted uh, towards those populations and making sure that, again, everyone has equitable access into these resources that the city can provide um, to continue our growth in local business and industry. How do you see racial disparities impacting constituents in your district? And are there any actions the city should take to address them? Um, well, I think we know that we, uh, for instance, I'm part of the Madison Guaranteed Income Task Force Advisory. So last year, uh, with the mayor's support, we did launch a guaranteed income program that will target 100, that is targeting 155 households. And so I'm looking forward to seeing the data of how providing $500 a month with no um, stipulations um, may help or provide us direction to go in um, lifting some of our extremely low income and impoverished families, or what are uh, further resources to support them um, to deal with things like housing cost burden, for instance. Um, um, lost track of thought. Can you repeat the question again? Yes. How do you see racial disparities impacting constituents in your district? And are there any actions the city should take to address them? Sure, thank you. Um, I think specifically in District 16, there's a highly engaged um, constituent basis. I am in regular contact with neighborhood associations, neighbors, and um, folks who are very much tuned into 
all everything that happens on the city. I think when we look at race and we look at class, um, as a black woman, I am a little discouraged of how often the the population that I'm mostly engaging with are folks that don't look like me or don't have the same experience. And that's fine, but that sends a message to me that racial disparities can um, uh, be intersectional with um, voter engagement and opportunities and folks being able to have capacity to attend city council meetings and provide public testimony on local policy that very much impacts them. Um, making governments uh, understandable and accessible to all and continuing as much as possible in hybrid capacities. We've seen increased resident engagements with the ability to attend meetings virtually or via Zoom. So I think, again, we need to um, pay attention to how is government, how are we educating the public about our policies, making it relatable, um, and also continuing to encourage that engagement specifically with um, whose voices aren't we hearing. What are the most critical issues that you see facing the people in your district and what would you propose to address them? Sure. Um, Specific, I, I feel like issues that are specific to District 16 aren't exclusive um, and that they're citywide issues. So public safety comes up a lot. Um, we've had some unfortunate traffic fatalities in our district. We've had issues with traffic and speeding, but also issues with shots fired and, and vehicle theft. So public safety remains a top concern um, that I'm hearing about. Um, I had mentioned that uh, in terms of growth, District 16 is growing uh, very much industrially. So continuing to um, make sure that I'm aware of business owners' concerns and needs and when, whenever able, uh, helping them make connections with the city to get resources to continue building our economy and local business. Um, housing. Uh, I won't say that it's an issue I specifically hear about within District 16, but um, looking at certain populations who are housing costs burdened or starting to get priced out of their home. So specifically thinking about senior citizens um, and those who are on a fixed income, thinking about families um, who are you know, working hard to provide uh, housing and basic needs for their children, um, but also keep a roof over their head. And I think just when we think about housing, making sure that affordability is at the key. We know we need to build more housing stock, but we also need to make sure that those units that are available are able to be afforded um, by a, a wide range of residents. What would you like to say to the viewing audience as we complete this interview? Sure. Um, I would like to say thank you first for um, watching uh, these uh, forums and becoming familiar with the candidates who are running for very important seats in this election cycle. Uh, the Common Council is going to see a lot of turnover. Um, we have a lot of alders who are relatively new with two or less years under their belts. And so it's important to be engaged and to come out and vote. Um, I would encourage voters to continue thinking about key issues such as equity making sure that we're amplifying the voices of marginalized folks and those that we don't uh, hear um, as often as others. Uh, I think in continuing to build community and restoration um, and coalition as we are coming together more in unity, able to come together more in unity safely uh, with the pandemic. I want to thank JL Curry for speaking with us and the viewing audience for taking the time to know your candidates. I want to remind everyone that primary election day is Tuesday, February 21st, and the general election is Tuesday, April 4th. As with every election, please vote. On behalf of Madison City Channel and the League of Women Voters of Dane County, Thank you for joining us.